about seven months ago, I was given the title Social Media Architect, and here you see this year's Burning Man's electrifying sculpture, and that's exactly how I felt for the past seven months. What is uh, someone who has a bachelor's degree in architecture doing, creating, trying to figure out what social media means to an architect? or to all of us, you know, we all use spatial space. So I've been in this journey to try to figure out what as an architectural designer, as someone who loves the experience of space, how does that relate to how we experience our virtual world through this super connectedness of us being plugged in constantly with our phones, with our TV screens, et cetera. So about uh, this past week, I went, I did, I did do lectures. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I lived in this teepee for three uh, nights and hung out with a bunch of people that wanted to unplug. And it was the most amazing feeling after being completely burnt out, plugged in completely for seven months straight. And when I came home, I was really puzzled by this idea that what, as a designer, as an architectural thinker, as a spatial designer, it's really catastrophic what I've been doing the past, you know, as an architect. Um, I feel this idea of what is it that, what kind of space am I really living in? And I began to think of my home as my plugged in brain. And it began to feel very restrictive and small for me. And I don't know if you've heard of the books, The Shallows um, by Nicholas Scar. He has this wonderful quote that explains how exactly how I feel about habitable and virtual space. He says, we want to believe that the impressions our brain records as sensations and stores as memories leave no physical imprint on its structure. To believe otherwise would, we feel, call into question the integrity of the self. And so when I returned from this unplugged th uh, week, um, I recalled why it felt so good to be unplugged and I now um, follow with a, a quote by Henry David Thoreau, which I love. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover what I had not lived. And I wondered, how much are we really living in our virtual life, you know? And I live in my, how do I live in my physical space? And if my overloaded, plugged-in brain was leaving scars, what are these scars going to look like? Imagine of all the typing that you do on a daily basis. And I love this picture of the fingers I just went through. Um, and this picture, which was from... Um, circa 1880 of the original switchboard operator hardware, but this is exactly how I feel, how my, the virtual interaction makes me feel this weight of constantly being connected, 100% plugged in. And so I began to wonder, how do I slow my world down? You know, it's inevitable that we are gonna participate in the virtual engagement, but as an, again, thinking as an architectural thinker, um, there has to be a better way for me to blend these two professions together. Um, and so my obsession with virtual life and its physical characteristics, I began to think of it, um, you know, do they, don't they just yank me out of my physical space? What is it that I'm really trying to achieve here? And I'm thinking how plugged in are we really and what does that mean for our future generations? Not only for us, but our, what are we teaching our kids and the people, the young kids of today? You know, um, in an, a recent article that I read in the Financial Times, they're calling this generation the template generation. And I thought, you know, this is the digitally plugged youth and they're living in a false world. But it's not just the youth. I think we've been living in this fall world, false world for quite a bit now. And this is one of the quotes from the template generation. Um, if Google or Facebook are telling them who they are, who are they? You could call them the template generation. There's a template for their social interactions, their games, their pictures. And then I follow with the quote that's also featured in the article by Julian Assange, which I thought was great. If the point is society itself, if there's no point in distinguishing one from the other, then we really have to have a conversation about the world that we want to live in. And again, I don't believe this is just the youth. I think it's just all of us that are plugging in with the youth around us. And so I come to question, 
are we becoming a more isolated society, you know? And what does that mean in architectural terms? Um, I love this picture because it's like these individuals in these pedestals, which remind me of the boxes that we live in every day. The boxes that as, you know, as architects, as builders or designers, we have been building these spaces for decades, really, you know? And so when you talk about templates, to me, it's like, we, do we live in curated templates as well? And I believe, I live, believe we do. Um, so really for me, it's maybe these virtual templates are really a representation of the reflection of how we are living in our physical space. It's not really anything new, but I love this picture of a theater performance because to me, just it really calls to mind this idea of this individual, how are we interacting within these four walls? Why do we live in orthogonal spaces? Why are we okay? And I think because we live in orthogonal spaces, perhaps that's why we're so comfortable are allowing Facebook and Google to tell us how we should live on our virtual space with these templates. I love this. Um, this is from Fahrenheit 451. And I'll have a quick quote by uh, Ray Bradbury that I love. He says, stuff your eyes with wonder. Live as if you drop dead in 10 seconds. See the world. It's more fantastic than any dream made or paid for in factories. And so I question again, I leave you with the question, are we really okay with being labeled the template generation? You know, and what can we do about it? It's inevitable that we're gonna be plugged in to virtual reality, to virtual engagement. So it's not gonna go away. If anything, it's probably gonna become more and more involved in our lives. So if, if it's true, how do we get better at living in the real world, keeping in mind both our virtual and how we live in our virtual and physical space? So again, this is just a reflection. Um, I continue to try to find the answer myself. Thank you very much.